quickly do a flip through of my bullet journal setup. I've just, I've literally spent mm, like half of today filming, setting up this bullet journal. Um, and it took hours and I know obviously I'll speed quite a few of the bits up, but that could potentially be a very long video. Um, so I thought I would just film a flip before I fill it all out so that you can see the setup. Um, basically, if you're a bit like me, you don't have the attention span to sit and watch a several hour video. <laughs> um, and I've also just um, actually spent a bit of time like putting things in the cover and like transferring stuff from my A6 rings into my new cover. So um, I can also show you those bits as well. So a little bit about the cover, if you haven't seen the unboxing of this, this is a Gilio A5 Apunto. It's in the royal blue. Um, and I got it when I won the um, Gilio Spotted competition. I won 50 euros credit. Um, so I treated myself to this beautiful planner for um, an early birthday present, really. It's my birthday in like what, two and a half weeks, I think, two weeks or something like that, I can't remember. Um, it's the beginning of May anyway. So um, yeah, I sort of treated myself to a new cover um, and I I go into like the notebook I've used a little bit more in the proper setup. I'll just quickly mention it. It is the Nanami Paper Crossfield. So it's 480 pages and it's Tomo River Paper. Um, and that was, it was basically, I wasn't going to bullet journal unless I could bullet journal in a notebook that had a hell of a lot of pages and which was Tomo River paper. So, um, that's the notebook that I'm using. Just in my left hand pockets here, I've just, um, basically transferred stuff from my A6 rings. I've got some postage stamps. Um, this is a little, like it came free from lines plus paper um and i've still not figured out what to do with it so i just I've, i had it tucked behind my stamps in my a6 so i've just moved over um i've put some business cards here i've got these two um tortoise shell cards i had in my a6 that one's just got some index tabs on and that one's blank i've got my little um hobonichi stencil i use this a lot so it's really handy to just keep in here even though it's not like the most attractive colour. Um, I use it a lot, so if I might actually pop it um, in this side pocket here. Um, I've got a little if found card. I make these out of watercolour paper. I just um, I cut a piece to size, tear the top, and then write on it. I've got a little picture of Bert, my Harry Potter Hogwarts pin, and um, my little Kermit clip. And then in the left hand side, other than that. Um, um, ruler that I've just put in there. I've got the Sainsbury's um, index tabs, which are like I ration these, and then I've also got one of these little Midori pockets, and um, just because they're really handy for if you have like little things that you want to keep or carry somewhere and you're worried about losing them. So um, I've just took that in there. In this little pocket, other than the notebook, I just have um, this piece of um, card that I had in my A6 that my mum uh, made. It was just, it was like a, an off cut. She was practicing. So she was throwing it away and I decided to pinch it. And then I have a card that I got from my sister um, last year. Like, I haven't been able to see my sister for well over a year now um, because of COVID. So I keep that little card in there just to remind me of her. Um, in the big back pocket, I've just basically shoved some, like, the paperwork and things I had in the big back pocket in my A6. There's nothing new in there. Um, it is just where I tend to just shove stuff. I am so chuffed, though, because now I'm in an A5, I could actually put, like, A4 sheets in there. So when I have a meeting or anything, I can just shove, shove it in the pocket. It's going to be awesome. Um, on the actual planner itself, actually, let me just show you, um, because it just jingled out of the way um I basically took the charms that I had on my A6 the little Harry Potter ones um I put them all together onto that um Deathly Hallows one and I've just attached it to the back zipper on the zipper pocket 
Um, because this planet, like when I, the reason I wanted the royal blue is because I'm a Ravenclaw and royal blue is like a Ravenclaw colour. Um, it's royal blue and bronze. I don't have any bronze, so I've got gold accessories. So, right then. So just let's quickly um, whiz through how I've got this set up. I did this little um, title page just so that I'd got something on it so that it wasn't blank and I've just stuck a gold Oddy clip there. Um, I don't have a big gold Oddy clip or like a big one that I want to put in this planner so I'm gonna see if I can get one because I feel like this one's a little bit small because um, this is where I took like receipts and things that I need to claim for work and that I haven't done yet because if I put it into any of the other pockets, I will forget, I will lose them. So, um, and it'll be too late for me to claim for them. So I, I feel like I need a bigger Ollie clip that I can put there and just tuck um, receipts and stuff under. On the back of that title page, I've just stuck post-it notes. And then um, this is like one of those reusable index tabs that I made. Then the first page, I just have my key. And um, one of the things about this setup for this planner, I actually, I did it all in fountain pen, which I don't think I've come across anyone else doing their bullet journal setup with fountain pen, actually, when I think about it. I've watched a hell of a lot of YouTube videos about it recently and I haven't seen any. Um, but yeah, I did it all with my fountain pen. I used my Twisby Diamond 580. It's an extra fine nib. And I used the Diamine Earl Grey ink, which is what is all over my hands. <laughs> Um, and I really like how it's turned out. I just, I wanted this to be, it's quite a minimal setup. It doesn't look minimal from this, but the actual setup, the actual functionality of it is very minimal. So, um, yeah, I've done it all just with pen and I used a mild liner, a gray mild liner to draw the lines and that's it basically. So I've got my key here. I've got it stuck on a post-it note just in case I change anything, but I have been using this key for like months now um and you know some of these icons i've been using for years uh, but the rest of them i've been using for quite a few months now so i i feel like actually i could have just written it in but i've got it on a post-it note for now then i have my index um i've left four pages for my index i um i've historically not been very good at indexing in a bullet journal but i have um been indexing in my Hobonichi so I feel like maybe I will do this a bit more and um, obviously it's how I'm going to be able to find things again so I have gone with an index and I've also I think one of the things that I was maybe doing wrong when I was indexing notebooks before is I, I would write the page number and then the thing whereas I'm doing it the other way around so I'm writing the thing then the page number so that and this is I, I learned this by actually reading the bullet journal method book and it's so that you can then you can add extra pages on uh, as you thread things and you um do more pa add more pages to your collection but throughout your book um you can just add those page numbers on so I've been do I've done it the proper way this time um next up after my two pages after my two spreads for the index I've got my grid spacing layout this one I just did just so that I've got it so that I can see it. Um, it did come in handy while I was planning out what I was doing with all of the different pages though. So that was good. I've got a pen test page on this page because I just I had an empty page and I thought it'd be nice to just be able to test all my fountain pen inks and stuff on there. Then we've got the future log and I've actually I've gone for a vertical layout um, for this one. If you've seen my um, A6 setup, I was actually using like an Alistair method style, but I I did find it difficult to, um, I sometimes find it difficult with the Alistair method to see like which column is which. So, um, especially once you get like that many columns deep. <laughs> um, so I decided to go for like a vertical version and um, I'm going to basically have like um, the... I'm going to treat it the same as I did with the Alistair Method one, where it's like a task is a dot, a circle is an event. So using my key icons um, and just and like a star is a special event and just list the things here. 
Um, the reason that, because obviously it's April when I'm filming this, the reason that I kept the um, the previous months from the year is because I, I refer back to what's happened in the past quite a lot. So I am going to fill these out with what happened in past months so that I've got that to refer back to in the future as well. Um, and I did do it for the full year. I'm hoping that because this notebook is so big, I will actually be able to fit a whole year in here. Please pray for me. <laughs> um, so then I've got my, um, then we get into collections basically, and I've got incoming packages and I've done it so that I've got two columns and I basically, I realise I don't record like the date that I buy something. I don't like, I don't, I don't need to know that stuff because I actually usually put that into my memory planning stuff. Um, so it's more actually that I need to know the item. Has it dispatched? Has I, have I received it? Has it arrived? And um, if I've returned it, I also need to know if I've returned it because then that will prompt me to think, have I had the refund for that? Hmm, I don't know. I'll go look. Um, on this side, I've got my little recommendations spread. This I've done the same as I had in my A6. And I just basically have book, music, podcast, television, film or other. And basically when people recommend things to me, I just write it down and mark which one it is. And then when I'm thinking, oh, I fancy reading a new book, what should I go and look for? Oh, huh. I'll maybe borrow that one or I'll, I'll read or I'll buy that one. Or if I'm like bored and I want something new to watch on telly, um, I will go and go, oh, so-and-so recommended that. I can go and uh, I can go and find it. Um, I've stuck in my little mousey clips that I had in my A6. Um, I've popped them in here. They are like little, they slip on, but I have actually just put a little bit of washi tape on them just to hold them in a bit better because in my A6 they used to fall out all the time and every time they did they ripped the paper and um, it really bugged me. <laughs> so I've just put a little bit of washi tape on. I love these little mousies. They're actually from a set that comes with, um, I think actually it comes with four mice and then it also has a cat and they're index markers. They're supposed to be like bookmarks basically. My auntie got me them for a gift. And I use the cat as an actual bookmark on like physical books that I'm reading. Um, but the little mousies I use just to mark um, pages that I think I'm going to go to a lot. So like this one, it's my incoming packages and recommendations. Um, the next two collections, I've got my wish list. Um, and this one I split into tech, planners, beauty, clothing, home and other. Um, and again, I just write the item and then say which category it goes into. Then for then I've got my gift list and for this one I just have all the different people in my family that I like routinely buy presents for. Um, I don't include one-offs in here. If it was like a one-off or if it's someone that I maybe just buy Christmas or I just buy something something small for, then I would just write who it was in that area there. Um, but for general stuff, um, for like I'm thinking like Christmas and birthdays and stuff. Um, that goes there then my next collection is my reading log I gave myself two pages for this one um because you know I'm planning to read quite a lot of books this year so I basically wanted this reading log to um be more to have more information in it I wanted it to be more informational I have like a reading log as in like a list of what I've read in my Hobonichi but I don't, and I also break it down into stats like, is it fiction or non-fiction, what genre is it, um, in lots of different places. But I don't have um, what time, what date I started, what date I finished, and whether I liked it or not. So I just wanted a little bit more information, and I want to track how long it takes me to read certain books, so that I can think, well, why was that taking me that long? Um, and I'm hoping that this will be... A little bit more of a concrete way of doing it because I use Goodreads for it at the moment but I often forget to mark when I start something so I get really annoyed because I'm several chapters in and um, I'm then realizing that I haven't put it on my Goodreads and for some reason it's just really hard to get Goodreads to change the date that you started a book so if I then go and find that book and mark it as currently reading it'll then set it for that date and even when I try and manually change it it never seems to stick so at least if I write down date, you know, day, month, and then um, when I finished it, I've got better of a, a better idea. And then also I can write down what my rating was. Then we're sort of into like home and fitness and things. So I've got my cleaning tracker. 
Um, I've simplified this quite a lot because I just found that the great long list that I had in my A6, a lot of those things didn't need doing weekly. Um, they maybe needed doing every few weeks. So I've sort of moved them on to um, my adulting tracker. And also a lot of them were sort of, could be like sort of combined as well because I had like counters, sink and hob all separate. Um, and I just, when I do those, I do all three at the same time. <laughs> um, so I had a lot of things that were separate that actually just could be grouped together. Um, like I have mirrors and then windows separate. Well, that's just glass. Like I do glass all in one go. I don't do them. I don't just do the mirrors or just do the windows. I do all of the glass because I've got the glass cleaner and my glass cloth out. So um, over the past few weeks, as I, well, no, past couple of months, I would say, as I've been um, figuring out my cleaning routine, I've basically learned what I could simplify on this. And I've just got it um, done into how many weeks and then each of the things, and I will just tick it for what's been done. Um, and then I've got my adulting tracker on this side. So this is like a combination of... Uh, deep cleaning stuff so stuff that doesn't get done as often but does need doing every few months maybe um and then also car maintenance because I'm rubbish at car maintenance and then also um my prescriptions because that is something that I am terrible at remembering to go and get so now I can if I've got it on here hopefully I will look and go oh I've not got I've not ordered my prescription yet this month I do use an app to help me track my prescriptions because I have so many, but um, yeah, I'm just hoping that will give me a little bit of a visual prompt. This one I've just sorted monthly. Even if something gets done more than once a month, I just think it's fine. I don't need to know that I've done it twice a month, really, I don't think. Then we're into health. So I've got my health history on here. Um, it, this looks very blank, I know. <laughs> uh, basically, what I'm going to be doing up at the top is obviously putting like key details, so like my um my name, my data, my date of birth, my NHS number, um, and also probably my pre payment certificate number for my prescription because um they don't give you a card anymore. <laughs> so if anyone ever asks me, I don't have it. Um, and then sort of like the conditions that I have, and then in this list, I'm going to be detailing um the dates for when certain conditions developed and things just because I've found this incredibly useful and um, I've, I've called on it quite a lot in the past few months so I wanted to have it in here sort of as a reference um, more than anything it's not really a tracker it's just a reference on this side I've got my fitness tracker and I've actually just gone with two things on this one um, and I've done it like as a yearly I've got the different months along the top and then I've got the days of the month down the side um and I'm just literally going to tick it well cross it if I've done it um and these are more really just to because I'm tracking this stuff in my Hobonichi but I just wanted somewhere in here that I could see it and just if I need motivating to do something if I need motivating I can look and go come on you can do it you've not done it for a while come on um so, and I've gone for yoga slash workout because although I'm just doing yoga now, earlier in the year I was doing other workouts and who knows later in the year I might want to also bring in some other workouts. So for me, it's either of those. And then I've gone for walking, which I am still doing absolutely shockingly at. I can't seem to do both. That's my, like I'm doing yoga every day at the moment because I've challenged myself to do 100 days. I can't seem to make myself do both. Even when I've like put it in my schedule, I can't seem to make myself do both. And it's really frustrating me. Um, so next up, I've got my blood pressure and weight. So this is stuff that I have to actually track for my, uh, the medication I'm on. So the medication I'm on for my ADHD can have an impact on your blood pressure um, and your heart rate and also your weight. So I have to report before every appointment, I have to report what my blood pressure and my weight is um and my pulse reading so i have a little um wrist it sits on my wrist blood pressure monitor it talks to me um it tells me what my reading is and i just make a note of it for each day and um, so i've basically got it set into the weeks and then i weigh myself once a week so i don't i don't need that for every day i just need it once a week so i've got each day of the week for my blood pressure 
and then um, my weight at the end, and then I got split it. I got it split into weeks. Um, I don't have all of this data for the whole of the year, so like the this bit is going to be a little bit blank, but I don't mind that. Next up, we're getting into like businessy stuff. So I've got my YouTube tracker. Um, this is just how I make sure that I've got everything done for YouTube videos. So. Um, I've got a space to write which week number I'm planning for the video to go out on. I'll probably write that in pencil, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, just because I want to, you know, I don't want to write it in pen and then have to scribble it out. So that will probably go in in pencil so that it can be moved around. But then basically like the title of the video and then if it's filmed, if I've photographed for the, um, for the thumbnail and then... Um, if I've actually made the thumbnail, so like if I've edited it and put the title, put the title on it and everything, then if I've edited the video, uh, uploaded the video, written the description, um, scheduled the video, and then finally if I've shared on Instagram about it, um, and it's quite important for me, I have to do them in this order because if I don't do them in this order, then um, as I've found in the past, I get really frustrated because I often go to edit and realise I've not done the thumbnail. And not only have I not done the thumbnail, I've not taken the photo for the thumbnail. And if I haven't taken the photo for the thumbnail and I've already started using the spread that I'm talking about, it's really, really annoying. <laughs> so um, I, I try to have them in the right order. Um, so the Alistair method for this is really useful. Then on this side, I've just got um, a product ideas page. I've left this blank just so that I can leave it open to how I want to use it. The next page, this one is um, basically like my supplies for my shop. I've never actually shown you this properly um, because I always take it out of my ring planner. It's one of one of the pages that I always take out. <laughs> um, and it's basically um, what the product is, who the supplier is, so who I order it from, and what the reference number is for or what it's called basically so that um, if I ever need to order something when I am away from home and don't have that information to hand um, I've I've basically got it with me like when I'm at work I often like in my lunch break I will sometimes like sit and order stuff um, supplies that I need and things then I've got a shop task list um, I've only done one sheet for now because I know that um, as time goes on I'll want to I'll just thread some more on it's not a big deal um but I basically on this one I have um again this is another thing I haven't really shown you before I don't think and it's basically it's a to-do list but what I do is I break everything down into how long I think it will take me to do and this is more these are tasks um I put tasks on here that are that could be done away from home basically um I do also put like things that can be done from home on here but if I do that then I tend to actually put it in my work in my like business planner um but maybe actually I will just transfer all of that over to here who knows um but I basically I will put what the task is um and then I will if it's less than 10 minutes it goes I put a dot in there if it's 10 to 30 minutes if it's 30 60 um less than two hours but obviously more than 60 or more than two hours um it gets a little dot to get attacked get categorized and then if I've got a little pocket of time and I think oh what can I do that's productive I'll just go to this list look and go oh I've got I've got 20 minutes I will do that thing that says it's 20 that says it's between 10 and 30 minutes um so and I don't like beat myself up if it takes longer than I thought it's going to be you know that's no big deal because I've still made progress on something um, but I've been doing this for long enough now that I sort of have a rough idea of how long something will take. So then we get into like my actual day job stuff. So I've got my work hours tracker um, and I've just got it Monday to Friday and then the total and then per week. Um, this is just something that I use just to keep track of when I end up working extra because it happens quite a lot. Um, I don't tend to count like, you know, like five, ten minutes over. But if I've worked like 15, 20, even sometimes like several hours over, I'm, I'm, I want to make sure that I've got that marked down. And I like to have it marked down with the actual time that I worked, not just, oh, I worked this many hours extra. I actually want to have like the time so that, I don't know, I just feel like if someone ever questioned it, I could say, I literally worked from this time to this time. That is what is written down. 
that's what I worked. <laughs> um, then I've got my work schedule. This I haven't I haven't done a huge amount with yet, but this and um, you know this is this is pie in the sky thinking. This page here. Um, this is where I want to sort of plot out what my ideal work week would look like. Um, like what the schedule would look like, how I would time block it. So I have two days in a week that are sort of my own. Um, like I, I work um, kind of on my own on those three days on a project that I work on. I do have a colleague who is going to be helping me with it, but also, but you know, like I, I manage my time. My time doesn't get taken up by customers or covering lunches um, and things like that. It's just, you know, I figure out what happens on those two days. And then three of the days, I'm at my site and um, it's just basically I need to figure out, you know, what sort of things do I want to prioritise when? Um, when is it better to do certain tasks as opposed to others? You know, um, those are a bit more fluid because those are the days that I'm with my staff and there's more likely to be like there's customers and I need to serve customers and things like that. Um, but yeah, just to help me plot that out. I do do this, I do this mainly actually on my Google Calendar. So this is kind of like, it's just so that I've got it written down really. Then this is my work tracker. Um, for my job, I manage our social media and I also manage a site. I manage a physical library. So I have lots of like building, staffing, budgeting type things that I have to be aware of. So um, I have basically this tracker here is for weekly tasks um some of like the top one is actually daily but i basically take it off when i've um approved them all for the week and it also encompasses i had i had these things and these things on a um on a 52 week fold out in my a6 and these things didn't need to be on a 52 because i only did them i only do them once a month they're a once a month job um so i've put them on a, a monthly tracker these things do need to be on a weekly one. And then also for my social media, I also do a chunk of stuff that is weekly that I was writing on my weekly to-do list every week that actually if I just have it on here, I can just tick it when it's done. So um, that's the plan for that. I've got a big space here that isn't being used um, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in there yet, but I've left it open so that I can put something in there if I want to. Then I've got... Um, four pages for my master list this is another thing that will probably more more pages will get threaded on um but this is basically the list of things that aren't month specific so if something isn't month specific if it doesn't need doing by a certain date if it doesn't have a deadline then it will go onto the master list and i use the master list and then the future log in combination to figure out what needs to go on a monthly list, if that makes sense. Um, and then equally from there, what needs to go on a daily list. And it's also the master list that I come to if um, if I've done everything on my list for the day and I think, right, what, what can I do? What can I check off? What can I get done, you know? Um, it's here that I come. And I have it split into work, home and shop. And then I have this extra column here, which is urgent. And I write the thing here and um, mark it whether it's work home or shop and then when I am in that um, process of figuring out what is going to go where what needs to be in this month I will um, go down the list and as, as I'm going down the list I just asterisk if it is something that needs doing soon and then I will look at those and go right okay they're the ones that need to go on the list for this month so I've left four pages for those. I know that I'll need more, um, but that's fine. I can just I can just thread them in. And then finally, I've just got my April monthly set up. I was going to start with May. Where it's I'm filming this on the 18th of April, but I thought I wanted to be able to use this now. So I've set it up for April so that I can start using it next week. Um, and I want to just see see if I can try this and see how it works. I've basically gone for kind of what the bullet journal method says to do, but added a couple of tweaks. So um, they say to use like a list for your calendar. I also need a visual. So I've put in this little one here 
just so that I've got a visual of you know what day is what if I put the days down the side of the numbers I just yeah it just it just messes with my brain <laughs> so I keep it simple I have the date and then I have the little calendar at the top and then I've put a little column on the right hand side for me to write what what we're having for dinner on that day because that's that was the only thing that I really used the weekly calendars for like consistently was I would look at it to see what we were having for dinner so um I've popped that on there and then I've got this little space at the top and any like really important big like high level things that were happening in the month I would just pop, pop up there because then that would grab my grab my attention and then for the task list I've gone for um an Alistair method version that is what I was using in my A6 but I was doing it I tried it on the monthly um but the pages were too small in the A6 so then I was doing it weekly and I basically had it for like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But what I've actually done is I've done, because um, this is a monthly list, I've done the week of the month. Um, so one of the things that I've added down this side is I've split it into the weeks and then I've said what week of the year it is. Because obviously that ties in a lot with my, um, with my trackers and things. I use a lot of weekly trackers. So... I've just got the, the week number up at the top here so that I can make a note. Um, oh, that's something that needs to happen on that week. That's something that needs to happen on that week. If it doesn't need to happen on that week, then it go it gets a dot in this final column here that's just got a little dot on it because um, that means it can just happen any time in the month. So that's all that I've actually got set up. Oh, no, actually, I have one more page that I've put at the back. And I put it at the back so that when I do future flips and this is filled out, I don't have to worry about it because you're not going to see it. Um, and it's just a password sheet. It's for work passwords because I part of what I do, obviously, with the social media and everything, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of passwords that I have to remember. And also for um, the project that I used to run with new technology, like there's loads of different passwords for that. So I need them written down somewhere. I have my little cookie monster um pencil board in here this is what I use in my Hobonichi but I actually I don't use it that often in my Hobonichi now because obviously when I'm writing further in the month I'm not on the bit that is rubbing against anything so um I've put it in here for now and I will just keep it in here for now and if I need it I can always just you know when I'm going to be using my Hobonichi it's when I'm at home so this will be with me so I can just take this out and put it into the Hobonichi to use it um but I thought I would carry it with me um this little post-it note was stuck in my a6 and I've just stuck it on there I've got some blotting paper because I use fountain pens um so it's useful to have blotting paper in the little secretarial here I've just got some vouchers for Holland and Barrett <laughs> um so they're useful to it's quite useful this little secretarial actually to keep those in I've just got some spare rifle paper company note paper because it's pretty um, in the zipper, what did I put in here? Oh, um, so in here I've got like um, cards for, like this is a, um, it's not actually my library card, it's a library card for, um, that I use for the social media. And then I've got, um, these are like printing cards. Our big printers use these, um, they're, they're like a cashless system basically. You just put a, you assign a card to your account. So that is a whistle stop tour of my new bullet journal. It's not too heavy, it's about the same as my A6 was. Um, it obviously has a bigger footprint, but really it's not a huge amount bigger. Like if I line up line at the bottom, it's not that much bigger even even. Like it's not that much deeper. Um, especially this sort of sat a little bit um chunkier when it had stuff in it as well so it was a bit thicker so it's not that much bigger really which is pretty cool because obviously if you if you went for an a5 rings you would be talking like it being out here so because it is a notebook cover it's slimmer so it's a little bit more portable but yeah i'm excited to get using this um seeing how it patinas over time and changes um it's coming up a bit light on the screen right now let me see if i can there you go it is um it's even a little bit darker than it's coming up now it is a dark blue it's not a light blue 
um, and I quite like that it's not going to show too many marks. The leather on this one feels really velvety, like it just feels really velvety and soft. Like my undyed was is quite a squeaky planner, whereas this isn't. It's 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 like velvety. It's beautiful. <laughs> but yeah, right. So I hope you enjoyed that quick flip. Um and yeah, if you do want to see me actually set it up, then there is. I d I'm presuming that I will have already put it up. I might not have. It might come after this one. But um yeah, there is a whole video of me setting the whole thing up but I think it will be quite a long one, just to warn you. Um, if I have already put it up, I will add it into the cards or the comments or something. Um, but thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon.